Howdy folks, Keith Bowen here, and this is Hard Rock University. Here I am in southern Nevada. We're checking out a property. Currently it's being used as a uh, gravel quarry. It's on some patented claims. No, Tim Tom. No, no, stay out. There you go, stay out. Anyhow, go. Call him. Jackson, come. Anyhow, so uh, it also had some old mines on it. So we're exploring and sampling what we can get to. I've already been down in this stope here. This is a, a classic stope. You have a near vertical zone that they were mining. It's not a vein in the conventional sense. It looks more like a breccia zone that's been juiced and had something deposited. Really can't see anything of terrible excitement to look at. But once I get back and process the samples, then I'll have a better idea. Let me back up a few steps and explain how we got to here. Jason, one of my mining partners, and I were wanting to look over some new ground. And a recent acquaintance of his had a part-time sand and gravel operation in an old mining district in southern Nevada. He was happy to have us look at but unfortunately, he couldn't meet us there, so we had very little information to go on. We also had very little time, only from mid-afternoon on Saturday to noon or a little bit later on Sunday. So, we were somewhat limited. In a situation like this, first thing you do is look at the old literature. See what you can find out. Look up the mining district, Google things. And in fact, it was a fairly substantial district. There was a number of mines. There were some of them pretty big. The largest one had over a million dollars in reported production in the early 1900s. So, indeed, it appeared we had an area that had uh, fairly widespread mineralization. There was things hither, thither, and yon over a number of miles, and in some cases fairly large. That's good. It was also an existing sand and gravel operation on patented claims. This means permitting would be relatively easy to non-existent if we actually found something. Also very good. Also because it is a sand and gravel operation, there might be infrastructure we could use. There might be power, water, heavy equipment, things like this that we could rent or borrow or whatever. So all this made this very interesting in terms of an operation that should be fairly easy to get going if we found something. So we had to have a plan on finding stuff in a very short period of time. Now, being an old mining district like this, one can assume that every square foot has been gone over at one time or another by the old timers, many of which were probably much better at finding gold than I am. So if they had found something interesting, they would have sampled it. And if the samples came back interesting, they would have dug it to some extent, a trench, a dog hole, if it got you know, more interesting than that, then actually a shaft, a tunnel, or some other substantial working. So the plan is simple. When you go into an area like this, first thing you look for is old workings, because lots of people have done a lot of work over a lot of time. There's no way you're going to be able to match that in your constraints. So look at what they found first. Now, let me show you what we found after we got there. Here's the view from the top of the uh, mountain above the uh, gravel quarry. Right there is the access road, and to the left up in the hills you can see the tailings piles from one of the larger mines. It's a fairly rugged terrain, but the mountains aren't too high. When you swing around here, Right there in the middle, next to the wash, is a shaft and the dump from that shaft. Didn't appear to be any other workings except a straight shaft. It might have been dug for uh, as a well or to examine something. Can't tell. It's about 60 feet to water down the shaft. So well, that was one of the workings. Now. That's Colorado River in the far distance. There's the sand and gravel operation, or part of it. 
right down in there, we found a couple of dog holes near me, and then farther away, the big stope and a side tunnel. And then on this mountain here, there was a, uh, a mine up near the top, there was an ore bin, and an old access road. And the first afternoon, after examining the area immediately around the gravel operation, I hiked up there to get a sample. It was a fairly good hike, and I didn't have much time on target because I wanted to get back before dark. But I did manage to get two samples, even though I didn't have the video camera with me, so I didn't get any video of that operation. So, at this point, we had the mine up on the hill, which I'd already sampled, the shaft, the two dog holes, the stope, and the side tunnel, and also the stockpiles of the sand and gravel operation, because since it had been mined and stockpiled, we had essentially a source for a very good bulk sample to see if there's any disseminated gold in this area. So those were things we needed to sample, and by then it was dark, and we're going to get started the next morning. The next morning when we started, first thing we checked was the side tunnel near the stope. And it was at 90 degrees to the stope, and there was no workings except just straight tunneling. So that appeared to me to be nothing more than an access tunnel or an exploration tunnel where they were just going through the rock looking for something. Since it was perpendicular to the stope, my assumption was that they were looking for a parallel structure and they hadn't really struck anything interesting because there was absolutely no indications of any other workings, just a straight drift. So then we decided to focus primarily on the uh, stope and the workings around that. Here I am inside the stope looking up at the top which is about 50 feet up there. There's the entrance and there's a fairly steep slope coming down. You can see the rope we put down for safety. One thing you don't want to do is slip and fall on an unknown slope when you don't know what's below you. It also assures you get out. There was workings up above at this end of the stope, and then a, a tunnel on the bottom. Now this is very important because it allows us to access the structure that they were actually mining. This tunnel is following the same structure they were mining, but one can assume probably a less rich zone, or they would have stoped it instead. Here you see the actual detail of the structure. It doesn't look like a vein in the conventional sense. It's badly broken up. This is quite brecciated. So is the wall rock. There's contact on one side. And there's the contact on the other side. And you notice there's very little difference in the color, texture, or anything between the uh, zone of interest and the wall rock. So that would lead me to believe that there's a greater than average chance of a good disseminated deposits and everything is broken up well and appears to be mineralization would be crack filling more than anything else. This appeared to be mostly broken volcanics. The tunnel continued on for about a hundred feet and then it opened out into another stope. Uh, again, roughly another hundred feet long. I had to be very careful testing for oxygen content on the way to make sure I didn't walk into some bad air. Uh, there's a number of different ways to do this, which I'll explain in another video. But I, uh, I was able to carefully explore in and find the uh, back of the, the workings where there was another stockpile of material, presumably from the uh, breccia zone they were following, which would allow me to take a nice sample from that, which I did. I took a couple sacks of uh, a grab off of the pile there. 
One of the big problems in a situation like this is actually accessing what it is they're mining. The slope is 50 feet high. You can't exactly get to the top of it. So you have to get what you can from where you can. After getting the samples in the back, then I came out and I was actually sampling the tunnel itself. Again, it goes through the breccia zone. One would assume it's probably a lower uh, quality, which is why they left it for ground support, but it's not necessarily so. I sampled it in three spots uh, by the method of laying down a, a small tarp and chipping fairly evenly across the back uh, through from one side to the other of the breccia zone. There was also a, uh, a crack that had filled pretty good that we decided to sample separately. Uh, you might call it a little veinlet, but it, was, it wasn't quartz or anything like that. But the geological reports in this area indicated that some of the ore didn't look that terribly good. And boy, I would sure agree with that. Once we were done with that, we came out to the top, went up to the dog holes and sampled what they were uh, dug through. Uh, neither one was very deep, and therefore they didn't uh, apparently find much to get excited about. And then we moved to the stockpiles. Now because of the fact that this is being used as a quarry, we have another opportunity that you normally wouldn't have. This hill here, ripping and pushing with a bulldozer and then running it over a screening plant and producing various sizes of gravel. Now, if there's going to be any enrichment at all, it'll probably be in the fine material. So those two stockpiles there were the finest. I took a bulk sample of each one of those by simply taking a shovel and just taking little bits out of the base all the way along it. You can see which way they built it. So we will have a fairly decent composite sample of a thousand tons or more of rock either at grade or enriched. And we'll see how that runs in case there's a lot of disseminated gold. And I wouldn't be surprised because I don't see veins. I don't see ore overlain by volcanics. I just see volcanics. And what they were mining just seems to be weak spots that had solutions put through them. So all of this stuff may have had solutions put through it. And it's definitely worth checking out. If this is disseminated, well, this, these whole hills could run profitable and you could turn this into a giant open pit, lease it to a big company and make a lot of money. Okay, back to hiking the crap out. Now you can hear me huffing and puffing a little bit there and part of the reason is I'm old and I'm getting a little belly. But also we have to hike all these samples out about a third of a mile because the access well, we had a key to the gate. <laughs> Somebody forgot that they had blocked with a couple of big boulders, too. And since we didn't have a quad with us, there was no way for us to drive in and drive back out again. So all this stuff had to be hiked. That also limits how big a sample we can take. Uh, obviously, with things like stockpiles, it would be nice to get a couple of buckets. As it was, I only took a half a bucket of two of the stockpiles. So that was another limiting factor. But we hiked all our samples out. While I was hiking some of the stuff out, um, Jason went down to the uh, shaft by the wash and took a sample there and hiked it back to the camp. Then we packed everything up and headed on our merry little way. In about a half a day's work, roughly, we had explored and sampled oh, half a square mile to a square mile and with a pretty good chance of getting anything that's real exciting there. Uh, the situation looked good. There's water there. Uh, access is good. I can get my Kia within 100 feet of the portal of the stopes. The layout of the stopes itself is reasonably good so that we could uh, 
mine it well, and in general the surrounding physical circumstances are quite good for a small mine. The question simply is, is there anything there worth mining? That will have to wait for the uh, assay results, and when I get them back, I'll do another video. Happy prospecting, and keep it safe.